Hello, this is Dan Ames with the BYU Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, and this is a, another video for our CEEN 514 class. Uh, this follows up on the video I just posted, which shows how to create and post a geoprocessing server to an ArcGIS server. And we tested that service. Um, make sure if you watch that video, keep track of one thing that I didn't explain correctly in there, which is that you need to set when you're um, when you're creating that model builder model, I forgot to tell you that the distance variable you have to change the property type uh, data type the property data type to linear unit. Um, that's the data type that the ArcGIS server knows how to work with, and so make sure you do that. Otherwise, it won't take your input from your um, JavaScript page. So if you've already posted your service, sorry about that. Now you have a chance to delete that service, which you can actually do from the ArcGIS Server Manager just by finding the server in here, service in here, and clicking the uh, uh, X button there, and it'll delete that service. And then you can repost your service. So that'll give you a chance to remember how to build a service with this distance parameter set as properties uh, data type linear unit. Okay, so I just had to do that, and now that I've done that, um, I've got a web page here that I've created to actually test my web service. It's We showed that you can run it through ArcMap Desktop, but it's cool to be able to run it through a web page, and that's the point of this exercise. So here's the, the web page. I will show you the web page working, and then we'll do a, a little walk through the code. So we'll start with our 10 kilometers. We'll find the cities that are within 10 kilometers of a river. <coughs> And this takes about 10 seconds to run. And while it's running, we will... Ah, yeah, there it is, done. So let's just zoom in and look at the results. So you can see I put a little text down here that says a total of 594 cities were found within 10 kilometers of a river. All of these green dots represent those cities that were uh, found within 10 kilometers of a river. Let's up it to uh, 50 and see how many cities that we could find within... 50 kilometers of a river. One of the problems with this activity is you're going to return a lot of records. And those records are going to come back here and be drawn in the map. And by default, ArcGIS server uh, wants to limit you to only a thousand results. And you can change that by going into your ArcGIS server manager, go to the tool, that you've created or the geoprocessing service you've created go to its parameters and change it by default it was 1000 here I changed it to 5000 I'd like all of the records to come back maybe you're running a smaller geoprocessing service that only has a couple of records coming back I have all these cities coming back and so I need it to be more than a thousand if you do change anything on this page make sure you click save and restart to restart the server service so it looks like it's working and we just ran the 50, so let's zoom in and see what that looks like. So you see a number of things on this map at this point. You can see the background map is the Esri Cities map. You can see this other map, these colored states and the yellow dots. That's actually a, uh, a, a map that I created as a map service on our ArcGIS server. In fact, if we bring back up the manager here, you can see, um, you can see the services that I've got under my name, Dan Ames, and there are a couple of map services. And we already had an activity where we posted a map service in the class. Sorry for third parties, I don't have a video on how to do that. But this is the map service, US map, that I'm displaying in the background here. So that's the colored states and then the yellow dots. And it also has a, a layer of rivers over it. Um, the orangish polygons, those represent the buffered uh, rivers. And so that's the 50 mile buffer around the rivers. And green dots are the results, the cities that are within that 50 mile buffer. And we count them and there's 1662. Just for fun, we'll run one more. We'll do 100 kilometers. Make sure this is working as expected. Fortunately, it seems to be processing fairly fast. 
So 100 kilometers, you can see that most of the United States is actually within 100 kilometers of a river. And 2,349 cities were found, and they are all of these green dots. Okay, so I feel like the thing is working. We've demonstrated it pretty well. Let's look at the source code. All right, so for the sake of simplicity, I put all of the code for this particular web page into a single HTML file called home.html. And we'll just walk through it little by little. Uh, we'll start here with the outer link, or the, excuse me, the outer tag is HTML. And then we have a head tag here. And I've put all of the uh, styling sheets and the scripts inside this head tag. And I'll come back to those in a moment. Let's scroll down to the body tag. The body tag is the stuff you actually see on the screen. And there's, it's actually quite small. There's a little paragraph indicating the, that this is uh, an input for the distance. We have an input box of type text called distance. This is the thing that people type in their distance for. And then there's a button here, find cities. Oh, look at that. We have a typo, cities near rivers. That's the text that's on the button. And that's the button stuff. I've got a horizontal rule. And then I've got a div tag for the map div. This is where the map is actually going to sit. And then another horizontal rule. That's that line across the map or across the web page. And then a div tag for where we're going to put that results, that little block of text saying how many cities were found. So that's the entire body right there. So when you very first load the page, let's see what happens. The very first time you load it, there's no text down at the bottom. There are two horizontal rules there at the top and the bottom, the map sitting in the middle, and there's that input box. But look, we've got this background map, and we also have my uh, map service both being displayed. How does that happen? It happens here. So first thing to keep in mind is when you're working with these uh, the ArcGIS JavaScript API, there's a particular syntax. It's a little funky. I don't know why they choose to, chose to use this. Um, this particular environment, Dojo, uses this syntax require and then a function, and then it actually embeds all of your JavaScript inside that function. So just sort of roll with it. Uh, if you want to learn more about this whole approach, then you can study Dojo. Dojo is a, a uh, basically a JavaScript app in environment that Esri is using. It's not created by Esri, but they've adopted it. Uh, so that's that's what's happening here. This first block of stuff is telling the uh, telling the JavaScript to load a bunch of objects from this Dojo framework. These include Esri objects and Dojo frame uh, Dojo objects. And then this function identifies all of the specific objects that we're going to be using inside the rest of the code. So let's get to the interesting part. It starts right here. First, we're going to create a new map. Now, this map has actually been defined outside the script. It's a global variable. We have actually three global variables, app, map, and GP for geoprocessing. So it's been defined above, and here we can um, actually set the map variable equal to a new map object. Uh, it's really nice with the Esri stuff. You could just say base map equal uh, base map colon and specify that we want the streets layer. So that's how that background oops, background streets data set back here got put in. Uh, centering it and zooming it to a certain level. You could change the zoom level if you want to come in a little bit closer. And then next we're going to create a layer that is my ArcGIS map service. That's the colored states and the dots and the blue rivers here. This is a map I made in ArcGIS Desktop and published. And this is the line of code that brings that map in and displays it. It's a new ArcGIS dynamic map service layer. There is my map server. It's called US Map. It's in that Dan Ames folder. In fact, if we go back to this manager, you can see it right here. That's that map and we're going to add it as a layer to the map. This is our public GP variable. Now this is going to be our geoprocessor. We make a new geoprocessor. What is that geoprocessor? That's our geoprocessing service. It's this one we created in ArcGIS Desktop and published, Find Cities by Rivers. Find Cities by Rivers. The syntax is like this. We go to the folder Dan Ames, uh, slash Find Cities by Rivers. That's the name of your process. 
you're asking for the geoprocessing server and then the task. And then uh, when you're using model builder, the model name shows up here and here. So that's a new geoprocessing service. We have to set the output uh, spatial coordinate system. So now we've got our global variable set. We need to create a function called run service. This is the function that we'll call when they click that button. Um, the run service function is pretty straightforward. We're going to create a new object, a new variable, which is the distance variable, and it's of type linear unit. Remember, I said we had to change that input of that variable distance variable to type linear unit, and this is why it's so that uh, so that we can use the linear unit uh, data type in JavaScript. And so it's going to be that type, that uh, that type of unit. A variable has a couple of elements, a distance and a units. So the distance is going to come from the web pages, distance tag, the value. What is that? Well, remember I said when we built the body, we created an input tag down here. And we that's a text uh, input data type. And its name or its ID is distance. So when we ask for the document's element that's named distance, it's pulling up that little text box. It's pulling up this text box here and getting the dist that value out of it and putting it into the distance variable. Esri kilometers is just a code for kilometers. I don't know why it's Esri's kilometers. It's just what it is. So we've created those, um, that, that variable. And now we're setting up a parameters object that has as many parameters as we need to put into our model. Turns out my model only needed one input parameter. Remember right here, only one input parameter, p, two output parameters, one input parameter. And so there's only one element in this params object, and its name is distance, and that's because that's what we called it right here, distance. Easy enough, right? And its value is vs distance, which is this variable right here. And then finally, we do geoprocessor or gp.execute, pass it the parameters, and then we hand it a little uh, function called display results. Um, that function is basically saying, hey, when you run, when you're done running your geoprocessing, I want you, Mr. ArcGIS server, service, to return by running this function display results. So once the thing finishes, it will call this function display results. That's exactly what we want to have happen. We want the results to come back. This function includes a results object when it is run. That's going to be where the points and the polygons are contained that will display in the map. Okay, so this result is coming back to us uh, and now we want to do something with it. First thing we'll do is we'll set up a polygon symbol and we'll also down here set up a point symbol. So if you want to change the way those polygons and points look, and you can adjust them. You could Google the syntax or just play around with these uh, values I've specified here. Once we set up the polygon symbol, we'll grab the features out of results. See result came through display result. We'll grab the features out of it. And this is the first layer that came back. We'll grab its value dot features. That all of the features. This will be all of the polygons that came back, the buffers around the rivers. We will loop through those. We'll set a symbol, make a map um, graphics, and we'll add that features symbol to the map graphics object. That basically draws it. Now we'll set up our point symbol variable or object, and we will get the points. The points are contained in the result in um, in the second member of the results list or array. And we'll grab all those features, loop through them, create their, create their symbol, and then draw them. This is a point symbol, so these are the points where we found our cities. Finally, we zoom out a little bit, we count the number of cities that were found, and then we build a little text here of how many cities were found, and we set the results div tag to be equal to that text, and display it. And that's how this thing works. So feel free to copy my code, try it, use it, and you should be able to successfully execute your service. We'll just try it once more since I have 10 more seconds on my 15 minute timer. 20, go. 
and there are the results. Thank you. Bye.